and class is officially started, even though we've been going for a minute. Okay, so what happens is, if you take the coefficient b, whatever's in front of your xy term, divided by a minus c, a in front of the x squared, b in front of the y squared, this will give you a ratio, and that is the tangent of 2 theta, the tangent of double the angle at which the conic has already been rotated. Okay? So if you see an xy, this is a conic that has been rotated, you don't know how far. This will tell you how far. Once you know how far it's been rotated, we've got two other formulas. In order to unrotate your conic, in order to unrotate your conic, here's what you're going to do. Everywhere you see an x, you're going to replace it with x cosine theta minus y sine theta. Everywhere you see a y, you're going to replace it with x sine theta plus, whoops, y cosine theta. It's hard to write it wrong. I don't have a great mnemonic for these, but you are going to have to know them for a non calculator section of your next test. Um, for x, I remember that x goes with cosine and y goes with sine, but these are hard, so something has to be backwards, so there's a minus sign in the middle. And then for y, everything is switched. Uh, the x is with the sine, the y is with the cosine, and the minus becomes a plus. Now, the presumption, when you're looking at something like this, this formula gives you the angle of rotation, assuming the conic has been rotated look at the clock. Counterclockwise, this will rotate it backwards clockwise. You don't have to know I'll keep all this in mind while you're doing it. The spatial relations don't matter. It's the algebra that's going to be the bear here. Okay? Um, any quick questions on the letters I put on the board? Not any why questions yet. That comes later. This is one of those things that we start with the how. We may talk about the why later. Um, yes? Would you rotate it on this? So are you going to be graphing it or something like this? Okay, very good question. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Short answer is, this conic has been rotated, and you're going to graph it rotated. But to find out what it really is, we have to unrotate it. So we have to find out what it would have been if it wasn't rotated. You have to unrotate it to find where the center is. To find the center and the A and the B and everything, and then we're going to graph that rotated. That can be fun. I'll show you. You'll see. But does it turn from the vertex or the center point? From the origin. This is all rotated. Oh, good point. No, this is all rotated. Um, hold that thought. Hold that thought a second. Yes, sir. I know you've talked to a lot of these guys about, like, you know, we're just given like, curiosity about this. But what is a rotating planet? It's a parabola, hyperbola, or a um, ellipse. An ellipse. Thank you. Um, that is at an angle that is neither perfectly horizontal nor perfectly vertical in terms of its transverse conjugate, semi-major, semi-minor, axis, directrix, or axis of symmetry. No, so none of those have to be parallel with the x or y axis anymore. Okay, um, only taking specific, if it's not a specific question about these formulas right here, what I've written on the board, your inability to read them, I need to move on. Yes? Because it's rotated at like an angle. How that thought? We'll get to that. I'm not, I don't want to answer any more questions like that until we get through an example. Okay. You'll see. That's why I said I only want, you guys understand the words and letters I've put up here, right? Okay, that's all I care about at this moment. We'll get to more. All right, let's see. Copy of the stage. And now we're going to start on this specific example. So let's see, I'm going to erase everything but the formulas we need. That description's on the last one. Whoops. Don't want to start randomly erasing terms. So copy down the 16x squared negative 24xy. Very good, yes. <coughs> copy that, and then these. Copy that. Okay, um, I lost, oh, the dot and part of the theta. Oh, the humanity. Yes, all right, now, um, and I'll move this formula. Oh, yeah, no, I am a doctor of science. We'll live, it's okay. We're, we're, we're gonna die. Shh, okay. Now, Just um, sleep. please. Okay, guys. All right. Now, um, first thing we need to know, tangent of 2 theta. Pardon? 
Yes, this is the problem we're doing, the example we're doing. Thank you. Tangent of 2 theta. B over A minus C, this is going to be negative 24 divided by 16 minus 9, which is going to be negative 24 over 7. Okay? Negative 24 over 7. Um, these problems we're going to give you to do without a calculator or without Desmos or any other aid fall into two general categories. On some of the problems, the tangent of 2 theta will turn out to be something you should have known, you should know from the unit circle. Like if this were square root of 2, uh, well, if it's tangent, if this were 1, you'd know 2 theta was 45 degrees. If this was square root of 3, you'd know 2 theta was 60 degrees. You have to remember all that from the unit circle. This one falls into another category of problem. And this category of problem is one where this is not one of the ones you're supposed to know from the unit circle. But you should be able to figure it out. And let me show you how. Oops, not file. I want to insert a graph. Um, you may not need to graph this. But you may want to. Just a sketch of a graph. This isn't going to be. But yeah, we're going to graph it at the end if we have time. But I think for the algebra, you're going to want the note paper. All right. Negative 24 over 7 is a tangent um, on a graph. What is tangent in terms of sine over cosine? Right? Very good. What is tangent in terms of x and y, like on the unit circle? Uh, x over y. Exactly wrong. It's a slope, so it's y over x, plus sine lines up with y. So this could be the y over x for some point. Um, incidentally, this could also be... 24 over negative 7, right? Okay? All right, I'm going to use 24 over negative 7 because I want to be in quadrant 2. We'll talk about that later. Basically, you want to use the smaller version of the angle. And again, you may not need to do this when you get a little better, but okay. So if I go over, I'm just going to sketch this real quick. If 7 is about there, 24 is going to be about. I should not have used a specific graph for this one. Um, more than triple that, so. All right, so we're looking at the worst hypotenuse. I'm going to try it with the line function. We're looking at this triangle here. Okay, so this triangle there's your negative 7. There's your 24. Yes, it could also be one that's negative 7, 24, and quadrant 4, but we're going to stick with quadrant 2 for now. Anyone quickly know what the hypotenuse is? Okay, Alexi's right. 7 squared plus 24 squared. Take the square root. Stephen, very good, remembers that that is one of our Pythagorean yeah, triples. Dealing with those okay. Now, this is important. Because look at our formulas we're going to use. Well, actually, don't look at those formulas if that comes up soon. All right, so what we know is, we don't know what theta is. This is all the information we have about 2 theta. So we know the sine of 2 theta is 24 over 25, right? Theta. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you. That's going to be 2 theta. And we know also we're at 25 instead of 24. We'll get to that. You're not going to know that for probably another five to ten minutes after. Here, it's going to be a strain, to strain of your. This is going to be a strain of your attention span. All right. So cosine of two theta negative since in quadrant two is negative seven over 24. Did I set up my sine and cosine correctly? Negative seven over 25. Uh, negative seven over 25. I did not. Thank you, Lucas. This is why you guys need to check me. All right. From this information, is there any way we can possibly find the actual sine and cosine of this angle? Yeah, we have to use those identities again. Which identity? Oh. I did have some double angle identities. Yeah. They're a little hard. Yeah, um, sine is uh, cosine times sine plus. Slow down. Okay, okay, you're mixing up. Sine sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. We're not going to use that one. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but we know looking at a 2 theta, right? But we'd like to have one theta. 
What's the relationship between two theta and one theta? Two. Two or one half. Okay, so we can use a half angle identity. All right, the half angle identities were things like, like for the example, the half angle identity for um, sine. It was sine of alpha over two, for example. Who remembers that one? It was plus or minus square root. Right? Square root. Yeah. Was it one plus? It was minus. Cosine or one minus? minus it was uh, minus for sine. Okay. Yeah, it was minus for sine, and it was plus for cosine. Very good. Okay. I'm almost more. I'm, I'm impressed with those of you who remember that. I'm almost more impressed with those of you whose notebooks are organized enough to find it quickly. Um. <laughs> Okay, if the cosine of 2 theta, we're, this is how you found the sine of half of an angle, right? Well, we're looking for the sine of half of this angle. Keep in mind, we never have to actually find this angle. If we know what the sine of 2 theta is, we can find the sine and cosine and tangent of theta without ever knowing what the angle is. We don't even have to care. If this had given us something like square root of 3, then we would have to care. That'd be the way to do it. All right, so for this particular example, if I'm looking at, I'm looking for the sine of 2 theta over 2, right? I'm looking for half this angle, correct? So that is going to be because I need to unrotate it by that much. We've been given it at this, the, um, the conic has been rotated theta radians, or theta degrees, but we only have a formula for 2 theta. Oh, because where is theta on the 16x squared? It's not in there anywhere. It's not. There, there's a formula to find 2 theta, and from 2 theta, we have to find half of that. Okay. We actually don't have to find the angle itself. We just need to know its sine and cosine to plug into these formulas. All right, I need to rush a little bit from here, unfortunately. Um, so this is going to be the square root of 1 minus, What's minus? cosine 2 theta over 2. It is plus or minus, but take a look at this angle set. We do know that this is a pretty good representation, right? Half of this angle, say Bennett's in quadrant one. Yeah, I'm only going to go with the plus. My next question was going to be, why can we ignore the minus? Because if we know theta is in quadrant two, and half of that is going to be in quadrant one. Anything between, divide 180 by two, you get 90. Divide 90 by two, you get 45. It's somewhere in here. Okay. Um, now, we know co uh, do we know cosine of 2 theta? Yes, we do. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus, is plus or minus? <coughs> I, I was just mentioning to Zach, and I said a little quickly. Um, it should be plus or minus by the formula. But if I know 2 theta is in quadrant 2, half of that is going to be in quadrant 1, okay. where, the cosine, where the sine is positive. Yeah. So I can get rid of the minus. Um, I know that from this geometry over here. Okay, let's simplify this, like we did back when we first did these identities. So this becomes with 25 plus 7 over 15. Jumping ahead a little bit, but yes. First step, minus subtraction becomes uh, addition. Now, Wait, which one are you doing? The sine data? Or the the sine. The sine. Yeah. Not doing the code. So then, what Lucas was saying is, I make a common denominator. Twenty-five over twenty. One becomes twenty-five over twenty-five, and then this becomes square root of thirty-two over fifty. Twenty-five plus seven is thirty-two. Divided by twenty-five and divided again by two becomes fifty. What's with the alpha repeater with it? This is just a reminder of what the formula originally looked like. That's how I taught it to you, so for kids with strong visual memories, I thought this might be a helpful reminder. Not meant to be confusing. Um, yes? Should for sine to um, angle to theta over 2, it should be sine theta? That's the same thing, I'm just showing yes. Right. I'm showing the step of how we have 2 theta, and we want to change it to theta. Absolutely, they do cancel. Here you go, Zach, this might help. Cross them out for you there. All right. Now, 32 over 50. Simplify this a little bit. It's the square root of 16 over 25. What's the square root of 16? Four. Four. What's the square root? Square root. <laughs> so the, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. And Stephen did jump ahead. 
the final simplification is four fifths. So we now know that the sine of theta is four over five. Think a moment before you answer. Do we have to go through all this again to find the cosine? No. No. Lucas, what kind of triangle is it? This is a three, four, five triangle. So what so we the found is the sine and cosine. We found the sine and cosine of the angle three fifths. to which this conic has been rotated. Okay. We don't know what that angle is. We need a cleansing breath. But to unrotate it, we're going to use this sine and this cosine in these formulas up here. Okay. So first, how will these formulas look? Let's see. Copy this page because there's some stuff on it I want to keep. Now let's get rid of some things. Who would it be? Oh, that's odd. Oh, there's no lagging that much. Oh, they were working. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. Most of that I think has to do with the computer to dump it. Since conics, this is the question I was going to ask earlier. Since conics are, are rotated by like an angle, obviously, why are we graphing them on a polar graph? That's going to be answered when we get to polar conics. <laughs> Actually, is the short answer to that. Polar conics. Yeah. Well, there's polar equations for everything, but there's some interesting patterns when you graph conics and polar equations. Get more annoying. Right. Um, that may help answer that question when we get there, Stephen. Okay. So here's where the fun algebra begins. So what happens is to unrotate this, everywhere we see an x, we have to replace it with x cosine theta minus y sine theta, and we know that cosine theta is 3 fifths minus y times the sine theta of 4 fifths. Was there a formula for that? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's one of the first formulas I gave. I but yeah, it's, it'll take a while to get used to them. Now for the x, it's switched. So it's x times the sine, which is what we found before. You mean y. For the second one, when we're replacing for y, we multiply the x times the sine of theta plus the y times the cosine of theta. So my only point is that the sines and cosines switch between the two, and it switches from minus to plus. Is this going to yield a point on a graph, the x and the y? You can use it for that. I hopefully I'll have time at the end to say that. You can actually plug in an individual point here and here, and the rotating point will be given here. So these are two solutions. Oh, you plug this back in. That's plug this back in here. Oh, okay. So here. Here's where these problems have hit, given people headaches to become someone legendary as a almost hazing ritual for this class. Okay, so here's what this looks like. What we now have to solve or simplify is 16 times 3 fifths x minus 4 fifths y squared. I've put this in for my first x. Minus 24 times for x. 3 fifths x oh my God. minus 4 fifths times the y I'm putting into the first time, 4 fifths x plus 3 fifths y. You forgot the y on the first two. I did, thank you very much. Plus 9. The second one as well. Wait, so why are you putting the x in there? If okay, <coughs> hold on, hold on. We're replacing this x with a quantity oh. of cosine times the x minus sine times the y. Yeah. Everywhere you see an x. Some books use a prime to distinguish which x you're talking about, but I don't because I've tried to grade people's work when they draw the primes, and for some reason that makes you guys even messy. Sure. What's a prime look like? Just an apostrophe. At this point, I don't think it matters. No. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so now the y squared, so this is y. So y is 4 fifths x plus... 3 fifths y, and that's squared, Shh. plus 110, let's pause for a moment here, okay, so 110, now this is multiplied times the x, so that is the 3 fifths x minus 4 fifths y, uh, minus 20 times the y substitution again, which is 4 fifths x y substitution, so that's plus 3 fifths y um, plus 100 equals 0. These are the problems that inspired Parker Bergman, class of 2012, I think, to tell me that I should make landscape scratch paper. Um, 
which has been very useful for this. Um, Ouch. Oh, that's why you got a landscape shot. Yeah, we have now, so we've got some foiling. Now, here's where knowing your foiling patterns comes in handy. If you don't know them, these take a lot longer. Um, the patterns that are most helpful are A plus B. This comes in handy. A plus B squared equals A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Um, well, here's the deal. Listen carefully to this part. This is one of the most important things. If, when you're done, if all of the x times y's haven't canceled out, you have done something wrong. And you have to go back and start eating. Yeah, yeah, when you're done, the length terms will cancel out. Alex, what do you think? How is the square supposed to be on the inside? The square is very much supposed to be. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Making lots of little typos today. Thank you for catching them. Because I wrote it wrong. Okay, yeah. so um, this pattern will help, and just you got to be good at foiling, and you can't screw up fractions. Um, are you guys ready? There are some tricks that I'll show you that'll make it a little bit easier as we go. This is going to be a lot of writing. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, one tonight, you'll get faster at it. Okay, so let's start, let me start showing you what the tricks will be like. <coughs> okay, first thing. If I have room. Um, six. Okay, but pen to work. All right. Sixteen times. Okay, following this factoring pattern, looking at a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, I'm going to get 9 25 x squared. All right, minus in this case. <laughs> minus 2AB. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times uh, 3 fifths X times 4 fifths Y plus, I put the minus here, and that's fine. If you do the factoring pattern, that should take care of it, putting the minus here. But you're right, here you can do the plus and the negative here. I think it's a little easier. Same as foiling? Yeah, same as foiling. Plus 16 25ths. And there's a y squared in there, and there's not a squared on the outside. Wait, I've never seen this before. This? Yeah. Wait, isn't it just like. I'm foiling. I'm foiling. I'm not going to show it both ways. I'm foiling using this pattern, so if you want to do it in your self foiling, that's fine. Try and follow along with me doing it this way. Okay. Yes, sir. Do we have a uh, landscape sketch over tonight for a home? Uh, I can put. I can upload some to the portal. You have to print can yourself. I don't. Can you take my sideways? Yeah. Well, then the lines don't go help you. Oh. Um, so okay. I can do graph paper sideways. Some kids left thought that was better than landscape scratch paper. paper. All right. Now, so looking at this next step, we have minus. I lost the parentheses there somewhere. We have minus twenty four times. Okay, I need to foil these. I just need to flat out foil these. So double check me. This is going to be 12 25ths x squared uh, outer plus 9 25ths <coughs> xy, right? Uh, 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 inner yes. minus 16 25ths xy. Why do you have 12 if you have 9? Foil first. 3 oh, fifths times 4 fifths. Foil. Oh, yeah, we're foiling. Right. We're not doing a pattern here. Um, we're not using the A plus B pattern because this is the right, X I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, double check me on that, though. Please double check me, though. And then this should be minus 12 25ths Y squared, correct? Okay, that's the first two terms. Is the test for this? 12. Shh. Do not ask about anything that is not related to this algebra. Okay. Cool. Nothing in. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Um, why do you have 12 there? 12 is not squared. Foil. Okay. This is the pattern for a minus b squared. We'll use it again here. Here I'm foiling this term, which was an x times a y. First, oh, okay. 3 fifths times 4 fifths, 12 fifths, x times x, x squared. Okay. Now when I do this 9 plus 9, yeah. what was originally 9, y squared, then I'm going to use this factoring pattern again. Let's start writing that down here. Plus 9, 
Okay, so that's going to be 16 25ths x squared plus 2 <coughs> times, that again, plus 2 times um, 4 fifths x, 3 fifths y, plus 9 20 fifths y squared. Um, not going to do much with the last ones yet. I'll show you why in a sec. Plus 110. I'll just bring these along for the ride. 3 fifths x minus 4 fifths y minus 20. 4 fifths x plus 3 fifths y plus 100 equals 0. Any questions so far? Um, There's like a national park in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, I did this, when I did these without the bright link, I would sometimes start at the beginning of this whiteboard yeah, and yeah. finish a single problem way on the end so of the blackboard. Like yeah. like old, you know, like old Wait, can I ask like, this question now? Uh, no. Because got, I need to. Is everyone at least at the point where you're writing this step? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm writing the last step. All right, good. I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this page and put that last step at the top. So you'll still be able to see it. <laughs> technology is involved today, yes. But someone has to understand what the technology is doing. Um, we've talked before about how conics describe things like planetary orbits and the path of comets and meteors can wipe out all life on Earth and such. And guess what? Those paths are not always perfectly vertical or horizontal. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to push a button and go to the moon. Yeah, anyway. Shh. Now, all right. Um, Did we delete it? Not intentionally, uh, but I do sometimes forget to switch to the select from the erase. Thank God for the OT button. Yes, it saved my life many a time. All right, so now let's take a look at what we're doing from here. Stuff here. Okay, um, one more line of, of attempting to sort of simplify a little bit. 16 times 9 25 x squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 minus 24 over 25 xy uh, plus 16 over 25 y squared. And I meant to do 24 over 25, thank you. Keep watching me for stuff like that. So what are you doing there? Are you doing negative 2 times 3 fifths x? Just simplifying, yeah. Two, negative 2 times 3 fifths x times 4 fifths y. So when you right. multiply negative 2 times 3 fifths x, does the answer of that you multiply by 3 4 fifths y? I'm even doing simpler than that. I'm remembering my basic fifth grade fraction skills, and I'm saying, oh, this is 2 over 1. Multiply the numerators. 2 times 3 times 4. That's my 24. Multiply the denominators. 1 times 5 times 5. Group the x and y at the end. Basic commutative associative property stuff from like third and fourth grade. That. Um, which we don't really review between now and then, so I don't blame you for forgetting. Um, 12 25 x squared. Let's say I had two like terms here. Um, I had plus 9 x 25 xy minus 16 25 xy. So the difference between those is going to be minus 7 25 correct? And then that's minus 12 25ths y squared, okay, uh, plus 9, this last one here, not this last one, but this next one, 16 over 25 x squared, plus 2 times 4 times 3, plus 24 over 25 x y, very good, um, plus 9 25ths y squared, and still just coming along for the ride are the plus 110 3 fifths x minus 4 fifths y and minus 20 4 fifths x plus 3 fifths y plus 100 equals 0. I will, great. I will tell you on this test um, last year, there was one child we got a little further than this and realized she had switched the three-fourths and the four-fifths on a problem very much like this and had to go back and start over. 
And there was another young man who worked through the problem and actually got to about this step, but had forgotten to simplify or how to simplify um, from this step and was attempting to do everything we've just been doing here. He was doing it with the square root of 32 over 50. And the other it? one in there, it was, oh my god, that page was insane. Um, yeah, so make sure you the roll test. Yes, that was the same one. Okay, so, um, shh. Now, all right, there is a trick that will help greatly from here. There's a couple of different ways to apply it. Some kids find it a little bit confusing, but here's the deal. I have a 25 in a lot of denominators, okay? And I have, I have some fives in denominators over here. I got 25 in a lot of denominators. If I multiply every single term by 25, first off, if I multiply everything by 25, I'm allowed to multiply in any order I want to. I don't have to multiply the 25 by the 16. I can just multiply the 25 by everything in these parentheses, and everything in these parentheses, and everything in these parentheses, and everything in these two parentheses. It's going to be a little bit confusing, but something like it will be necessary in each one. What? Quick question, just about yeah, so. Uh, at the last thing's 100 and 110. You know what? It's 100. It's just drawn really badly. Uh, I made that loop so tight it does look like a 1. But thank you. OK, so. Wait, what were you saying about the that? OK, here's the deal. I've got a lot of fractions I'd like to get rid of. All right? The denominators are almost all 25s, and the remaining ones are 5s. I'm going to multiply everything by 25. You have four minutes. I don't, thank you. I don't have to multiply the 25 by the 16. You know how you're allowed to multiply in any order you want to? Um, like if I say what's 3 times 4 times 5. Yeah, you could multiply the. 3 times 5 and then times 4, right? So I'm going to multiply the 25. I can distribute the 25 through the parentheses and leave the 16 alone. All right, that's a trick some people find a little bit confusing. Trust me on it. We'll talk about it in more detail if necessary. But, um, so what I'm going to do, if I multiply everything by 25, I then get 16 times 9x squared minus 24xy plus 16y squared. Minus 24 times 12x squared minus 7xy minus 12y squared plus 9 times 16x squared plus 24xy uh, plus 9y squared. Here's the tricky part. After this 110, I don't have a 25 in the denominator. I have a 5 in the denominator. So when I distribute my 25 to both of these fractions, Multiply by 5. Very good, Zach. The 5 is only going to reduce to 25, not to 1, but just to 5. Yes? You can do it to everything? Yeah. 25? Yep. But you, you're somehow leaving out the stuff on the outside? Not somehow. It's what I just mentioned. I can choose to multiply in any order, Zach. It's a little hard to see this connection, but if I say what's 3 times 4 times 5, am I allowed to multiply 3 times 5, get yeah. 15, then times 4? Right. right. So essentially what we're doing is we're multiplying the 25 times this and not choosing to multiply by the... By the 16 later, or maybe later. We'll have to deal with the 16 eventually, but with the 25 can just be like, I can just rewrite this as 4 times 15, and I can leave it that way forever, right? Okay, hang on one sec, pause. Good news, XY does add up to zero. Good, I'm glad. So this was like Apollo 13 had to do on piece of paper. Yes. Okay. Only harder. Okay, but they had tables and stuff, and short enough formulas. All right, you guys ready? Take a deep breath. And, okay, now, <laughs> so, or three. So basically, as Zach put it, because we're distributing the 25 here, but there's only five in the denominators, our numerators are going to get five times bigger. So this is going to become 15x <coughs> minus 20y minus 20 times 20x plus, I said 5 times bigger, 15y. Here's one that's easy to forget. Plus 2,500 equals 0. Yes, sir? It's, so you're multiplying by 25. Yes. So if you multiply 3 by 25, it's 15. 
Yes. Yes, it is. Five will distribute, yeah. 25 times 3 is 75 divided by 5 is 15, if you prefer that. All right, so now this is getting a little bit more reasonable. Just a little bit. Um, I will let you use a four-function calculator for part of this on some of these problems. Um, okay, now let me make sure I don't erase anything I don't want to. Okay, change to select. I love this as a review of basic algebra and fraction techniques. There's no skill in this. This is not really meant to be. Uh, it's not really meant to be comforting. But there's no skill in this that's really you didn't learn by the end of algebra one. Um, but it is so 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 easy to mess up. All right. Now some of you may already know. Now I'm ready to distribute these numbers on the outside. Um, 16 times 9, I happen to know, is 144x squared. Uh, 16 times 24, I used to know that one off the top of my head, because it came up too often, but you see that fourth, what is it? 384. 384 minus 384xy. 16 times 16, I do know, is 256y squared. Okay, minus 24 times 12, well, 12 times 12 is 144. Double that, you get 288. So that's minus 288x squared. Okay, uh, plus 24 times 7, that is, no, it's bigger than that. 7 times 2 is 140, 7 times 4 is 48, 168, right? Yeah, 168. So that's plus 168 xy, 24 times 12 again, but this time it's plus 288 y squared. Um, let's see, plus 9 times 16, we just said a minute ago, was 144 x squared. 9 times 24. So what are you doing now? I'm distributing. 24 and 16. Two, yeah, 9 times 24. It's 216. That's 216. 9 times 9 plus 81 y squared. 110 times 15. Somebody help me out on this one. Oh, boy. 110 times 15? Yeah. 110 times 15. So we should have a calculator. 16, 1650. 165. 0x. 110 times 20, yes. I know, is 2200, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Minus 400x. Uh, 20 times 15, that's minus 350y. 20 times 15. 20 times 15 is 350, right? 300. It's 300, you're correct. Thank you. I need you guys to go check me. Am I doing it? Yes, sir. Okay, first thing to check. No point to combining any other like terms. First thing to check is do the XYs cancel out? Because if they don't, you basically got to go back somewhere and either find your mistake or start over. Uh, they better. Because if there's still an XY there, you don't have an you don't have an unrotating conic. Yes, sir. Um, six say that the sign error is the most common error in math for the digital pacing. What is the chances that I'll have a sign error and screw this entire thing up? Like it seems like oh, close to one hundred percent the first couple times. I think rather than a sign error, the base is going to be. And at any rate, do the but do the x's and y's go away? Is a one is two sixteen plus one sixty eight three eighty four? Because then they'll cancel. Because I've got a plus two sixteen and plus one sixty eight and minus three eighty four. How do they work like? So you got to calculate it. Uh, Alex uh, nodding his head? Yes. Alex agrees. Excellent. As long as these cancel out, that doesn't guarantee that we've done everything else right. But if those don't cancel out, we've done something wrong. Do you make mistakes on those two? Is it that hard that we can even have a way? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold um, well, a lot of high level. Happy. When you get to really high level math, it starts branching out ways where there's some very high level mathematicians who aren't particularly good at addition and subtraction, for example, but they can visualize four dimensional spaces, so who cares? Plus, we have calculators now. Um, the, um, no, I mean, with this stuff, if I'm, I was, I was pretty good at this if I'm sitting down at a desk quietly, pencil and paper, I focus, I'm pretty good at this. At the board today, I'm messing up even more than usual, so um, it's not my best day for it. Um, 
That's yeah, that was the goal. And now let's see what we have left. Because now first we did not mean to erase that. Um, that can happen sometimes. So hold that thought a minute, Peter. I'm gonna ask Peter a question in a minute. Um I'll give us a little bit more to work with here. Well that thought. Well that thought. Okay, so now what happens with the we got a one positive 144x squared. We have a positive 144x squared. And a positive 288. And a negative 288. Negative 288. So the x squareds are all gone too. Lucas, what do you think that means? Very good. If all your x squared disappear, this will turn out to be a rotated parabola. Okay? Because the parabola is the one. You don't know that looking at this. Yes, there are formulas to know that looking at this. But at a glance, you don't know this is a parabola. But when you unrotate it and you lose either the x squared or the y squared, then you know you're looking at a parabola if we've done everything else right. Um, let's see what happens with the y squared. Plus 144 plus 144 minus 288. Okay? Um, now let's take a look at the... 256 y squared. 288. 281. And 81. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to cancel out. They're not going to cancel out. What large number is that? Well, large. 25 <laughs> squared. What a plus? 625. 625. 625. Okay. 625 y squared. Okay. And then um, let's see. We also have. I'm running out of colors. Let's just start doubling up. Um, I got more colors, but I'm not going to follow them. I'll just double. But we also have minus 2500y, right? And I'm just, uh, let's see. Thank you. Um, any other, anything other than 1650x? Oh, 1650x minus 400x. So that's going to be plus 1250x plus 2500 equals zero. Oh, shoot. And 625 goes into all of these evenly. So we're actually looking at y squared minus 4y plus 2x. Uh, well, we have 600 on the outside. Do you remember what you Plus 4. Down? Nope, equals 0. Dividing everything by 0. Dividing everything by 625. So it all goes into it evenly. Which is the parabola y squared minus 4y equals negative 2x minus 4, correct? Yeah. Okay, I'm give myself a little bit more room before I complete the square. I can now totally see why you filmed this. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're back to like, you know, maybe step. So now we're back to what the test was on last time. Um, I have to complete the square. So this is y squared minus 4y. I'd like there to be a plus 4 there, correct? And I don't have to add anything else, so that's going to be just equal to negative 2x. So my final parabola is... Yeah. Ooh. I have to grab my hand eventually, but we'll do it on Desmos today. Y minus 2 minus squared. Uh, I added 4 to both sides. When and there was a minus 4 here. Both sides? Yes, when you complete the square, if I add 4 to one side, I have to add it to the other. I got an you know this. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, now, so did I complete the square correctly? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so P equals uh, negative 1 half, because remember, here's your... My 4P is equal to negative 2, correct? Okay, so you should be able to graph this one now. Um, and this graphing would be the same as how you did last week, except you'd have to graph it at a certain angle. We'll talk about the graphing without Desmos tomorrow. Well, we know how to graph it. Graph. Yeah, but, sorry, but you're going to have to graph it at that angle. You have to graph it at theta. So what we're going to learn how to do... But couldn't you just what, plug so in your original you equation and have it have Desmos graph it? Yeah, but you're going to do it by hand. It's not intuitive to, do not, to not do it on a polar graph. I know, but hold on. Uh, you'll see why, hopefully. Um, okay, let's take a look at this. First off, let's put in our answer and see if we did this right. You can get an answer that looks right and still realize. So y minus 2 squared? Yeah. 
One minus two squared equals negative two x, right? Yeah. P equals negative one half. Yes. Okay, so there's the parabola we're talking about. Like, uh, Do you have like a slider? Can I do the entire rotation? Kind of it can, but the rotation is hard to put in. I'll, I'll do that before we're done. Okay, now, for the next one, hang on. I have to put in this whole rigmarole. So the original problem, let's see, was 16x squared, right? Minus 24xy. Y. Very good, double check that I'm technically plus 9y squared. Squared plus 110x minus 20y plus 100. Plus 100. So, well, he slides out. Boom. There it is rotated. Yeah. That looks about right. So, it was here, and it was rotated about this many degrees, which makes sense. It looks like it's rotated less than 90 degrees, right? Which is good because, remember, we found a 2 theta that we said was in quadrant 2, and we figured theta had to be somewhere over here. We still don't know what theta is, by the way. Why doesn't we'll it find it with a calculator, but... Why doesn't it rotate around the vertex of the vertex of the plane? It's rotating around the origin. These all rotations around the origin. Okay. So, so wait, when they're shifted, it's going to pay. Pardon? Oh, around the origin being 0, 0. Yeah. So it shifted this point. I know the annotation solved for up. This point here has rotated so many degrees to this vertex. That is. So oh, that's so rotated. So it doesn't rotate. rotate around the vertex. It rotates around the origin. So it's as if you took the graph and just tilted it. Yes. yes. And what um but then put it on a regular graph. In fact, when we graph this Wait, I need to get blue. I need to get blue. Hold on, buddy. Um can you even see the mouse? There it is. Okay. Um when we actually graph this, one important part of your graph is going to be that you graph your, this is going to be really messy kind of, I'm sorry for that, is that you graph your, your new axes. I think we did that for our As well. Okay? So you will graph a new one. Most books call this your x prime, y prime axes, but, and you would graph this blue parabola, and you can graph your new axes to show you. No, this is the simplest form of it that we got. This is after we simplified it. Well, talk to me later, okay? Hey guys, that's the end of it, and um, I'll try to get this up as soon as I can today. And sh hang on. Sh and okay, we are. Then you need this up, or Zach, or you need this blue one. Yeah. What about it? It's here. Okay. Good luck. Okay, we'll talk about how you actually draw by hand. Good night and good luck. Still tomorrow. snowing. It looks like there's less snow on the ground. Adam, welcome back. Fast you got to take the last test, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah. you know what? You You should be with for this. Yeah. You have to do three ten steps. Lucas emotionally understands your reaction. Please wish me luck. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I haven't stopped recording. What I'm going to do my because I have two tests for Susie and four tests for Amy. Well, I did one of Amy's tests. I'm really sorry about that. I understand.